Hello out there and welcome to episode 61 of the Nursing Home Abuse Podcast. My name is Rob Schink. And I'm Will Smith. And we are your co-hosts for this podcast, Nursing Home Abuse Podcast. That's right. Um, What's going on? As we go to air, it's March 26th. Mm, It looks like we're about a week away from the Easter Bunny visiting. Yes. Okay, so, Will... You and I have talked about family tradition, your family traditions, and how sure. odd they are because mm-hmm. you grew up in the mountains. In the mountains, and you didn't really celebrate things. So mm-hmm. my question is: Did you do anything for Easter? Like, did y'all, did your, did your mom or dad hide eggs in the house with, with baskets and things like that? Did you eat candy? Um, I I remember this one year because I'm southern and come from a southern family. As most southerners, I have a variety of nicknames. Scooter, Wooby Tebow, Wooby Tebow Bonger, Scootoby. So my dad took all of these these colored eggs and wrote the different nicknames on them and hit them for me. That's the only Easter that I actually remember. I, I guess the rest of the Easter's, we just I don't know. It's there's it's on a dirt road. What am I going to do? So do, okay, let me, let me ask you this then. When you found the eggs what did you do with the eggs actually it's funny you should ask that because i distinctly remember putting them underneath my bed and leaving them there uh because i will never forget the way that it smelled weeks later when my parents discovered that the eggs were still there um and they had to be removed it was an awful awful smell because they were rotten what I don't understand. I don't understand. Like, why? Why did you put them under your bed? Because I was a kid. I mean, I wasn't. Uh, you know, as most children, I wasn't really thinking about the future. I was just thinking about. Well, I like all these eggs. They have my nicknames on them. Right. I mean, well, I really blame my parents because why? I was, yeah. Why weren't they like, hey, what happened to that dozen or so eggs that we <laughs> let you play with? You know, I don't know. That must have had other things on their mind at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we when so each of us would dye two eggs the night before and they would go into our basket so and the, obviously the easter bunny would bring candy put them in the basket but we mm-hmm. would have two eggs and we would always based on my father's attitude most of the time we always made one of the eggs we dyed it to make it look like a prozac pill so as a joke to him that he needed to be on prozac so one side would be yellow and one side would be green prozac um i don't know did he even saw prozac did, was Prozac back then? Yeah, I think I remember because I remember because I, as a, like a nine year old, had a subscription to Time Magazine, and I remember Prozac being on the cover of Time Magazine one year. Like this is the this is the drug of the century or whatever. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, it's I, been I around Prozac for a long was a time. New thing. No, I've been around for a long time. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's that's my. And then we would when we found the eggs, we would eat. We would we would. Um, I would put spicy mustard on them and, and you know squish the eggs the hard boiled eggs with mustard and, and eat it like that oh i don't think i ever ate the that that was a huge waste of, of protein. no we ate all of yeah, ours we, of ate, we ate yeah. all of ours um well that was riveting uh yeah well it was very interesting uh and that uh that took some time and speaking of taking time um what about the statute of limitation in these cases? So, this what, what cases? What statute in, in limitations? Nursing, it, it'd be very good. There you go. So the statute, uh, statute, not the stat, the Venus de Milo, the the statute, the the law of limitations on when you can bring certain suits. There is a time limit on when you can bring um, a lawsuit, an action. For every type of action there is, from a personal injury action to uh, a breach of contract um, to property issues, there, there's a time limit. And and the reason that there's a time limit is because you 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 have to control what what a person should reasonably expect to um, to deal with as far as litigation. You know, I mean. It would not be fair, as a plaintiff's attorney, I agree with this, it would not be fair uh, 50 years from now for me to go up to somebody and go, hey, remember that auto accident you had 50 years ago? Well, we're going to sue you now. Neither would 20 years or 10 years, to be honest with you. Um, 
you know, I, I really don't have a huge issue with the statute of limitation in Georgia for as personal a, injury. As a, as a principle. As a principle. In Georgia, it is, uh, in general, for personal injury cases, two years. There are certain exceptions to that that have to do with uh, the incapacitation of the injured person. Um, and for our purposes... Uh, or, or perhaps even when you know when the actual when the actual injury should have been discovered. For our purposes in nursing home cases, the the big issue is um, when the person died and when an estate was set up. So, for example, let's say that um, in a typical case, we have uh, Miss Johnson who passes away January first of 2010 okay so her statute of of limitations and there's 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 two claims that are going to be made here right because we're we're claiming that this nursing home did or failed to do something which led to her death we're also assuming for this hypothetical that um let's say that she had a bed sore and those are painful so she also has a pain and suffering aspect, as well as you know anything else that goes with personal injury, like medical bills. Um, so you have, on one hand, you have a personal injury claim, and on the other hand, you have the wrongful death claim. All right, um, you've got two years before you have lost the ability to bring those actions. Now. In a case like this, Ms. Johnson has passed away. So clearly, Ms. Johnson cannot bring, um, she cannot bring this action. And it takes a, a while for somebody to set up an estate. You can't just go straight to the probate court and go, hey, you know, I'm Miranda Johnson. I'm her daughter. I want to be the administrator. And, and then it happens, you have to go through an entire process, you have to reach out to heirs, you have to publish it in a, in a local publication, you have to pay fees. It, it takes a while. So what Georgia has said is this, that the time between the passing of the individual, so the time between the day they died, so here it is January 1st of 2010, and the time... Um, that it takes until the, the the time until you set up an estate is not counted against the two years. Okay? In Georgia. In Georgia. This this is only Georgia. It is not federal. It is not Alabama, Florida, Tennessee. This is Georgia. So what that means is let's say that and this is very significant. Okay. Let's say that um it's January um, 1st, 2011, all right? And Miranda Johnson, her daughter, has only just now found, finally set up the estate. It is official on January 1st of 2011. So what, what does that mean for the purposes of the statute of limitations on Ms. Johnson's case? It means... It only means something for the personal injury aspect. The wrongful death is it still expires um, two years after her passing, right? Because you don't need anything. You, you don't have to set up an estate. Let's let me let's unpack that a little bit for the yeah. viewers that are not that, that that might need a little uh, refresher course. So when we say a personal injury claim, a personal injury is a category of the law that includes several different types of what we would call a cause of action. So, for example, defamation, medical malpractice, general negligence, um, assault, battery, um, types of actions that cause somebody a harm. Uh, for the most part in, in Georgia, an individual has two years from the time of the harm so uh, to file a lawsuit or the ability to bring that suit is lost most of the time like we'll explain there's going to be times when the um the, the the statute of limitations is told in other words it's stalled or stopped 
Um, so uh, f it's mostly two years for general negligence, nursing home malpractice, this type of things without any of those exceptions that, that cause it to be longer. Um, some personal injury claims are shorter. So for example, defamation in Georgia, you only have one year as opposed to two years and states are different. So Georgia, it's, we're saying two years in, in Tennessee, uh, many personal injury causes of actions that we were just explaining, negligence, assault, battery, these type of things, it's a year. Um, in some other states, it's longer. It can be three or four years. And for the policy rationale and reasons that we have mentioned, whereas on one hand, you have to give somebody the time to collect themselves and do investigation and figure out whether or not they want to bring a claim and then bring the claim. On the other hand, you want to protect the uh, individual, the future defendant, so to speak, from having to protect themselves from a claim that's now so old that the witnesses are gone, the documents are gone, um, testimony is gone, that kind of thing. So it's a it's a, um, a, a balancing right. act. So in short, though, what Will has explained is that in our typical nursing home case. Wh wh where we have two claims. Now, not every nursing home case, we're going to make a claim for wrongful death. But generally, every single nursing home case, we're going to make a claim for personal injury. Right. So the claim for personal injury most of the time is meaning that we are making a claim for negligence. Um, that has caused uh, some type of damage. So in Will's case, in Will's example, it's a bed sore. So in that case, we're going to be making a claim under the individual that was hurt for pain and suffering, medical bills, costs and expenses for having to go through that injury. And, and this, go, this, this belongs, that belongs to the estate. And that's the reason that the time between setting up the estate and the time between that individual's passing doesn't count against them for the purposes of statute of limitations because that specific claim belongs to the state um the estate other other entities surviving spouse or surviving child can actually bring a wrongful death claim which is a separate Yes. personal injury claim that is brought by the spouse child or specified decedent um uh in not decedent de, 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 that's what i'm looking for heir heir um, descendant descendant which is brought by a um statutory uh <laughs> I can't remember. I keep wanting to say decedent. Descendant. 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 Of the, the, of the deceased. Descendants. Yeah, of the deceased person. Yeah. So these are two separate claims. So in short, what Will is saying is that in some instances, um, the personal injury claim held by the person that's been hurt, the resident, is told or stopped until the time that an estate is set up, mm -hmm. um, such that the two years doesn't start clicking or it's delayed by that amount of time. The wrongful death claim, which is held by the descendants of the um, person the resident the loved ones of the resident it's it keeps does going. not it keeps yeah. going it's two years uh, unless there's some reason why it would not be in some and again this is actually gonna be one of the first times because we're dealing with sometimes finite numbers in these where i want to make a disclaimer to the audience right now that if if do not rely on this podcast if you are considering bringing a claim for wrongful death personal injury against a nursing home right because of the statute of limitations information that you need to do you, it immediately you, you just talk to an attorney um but but you know what we're talking is in generalities because again like we said there might be facts in your case that extend the statute of limitations and there are sometimes facts in these cases depending on who the defendant is in georgia where you have to do other things prior to bringing in the lawsuit or you Absolutely. lose the claim so um it's very important that if you are dealing with this issue that you actually call an attorney and and get a consultation and figure out definitively in your specific instance whether or not the statute of limitation is running, has run, or is stalled. And 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 this is only up to uh, a five-year period. So Ms. Johnson dies January 1st, 2010. Her daughter, Miranda, doesn't set up the estate until January 1st, 2011. Okay, so that period of, of 12 months doesn't count against her. So she still has two years to bring that personal injury claim. Let's say that she had waited until... Um, to set up the estate until 2016 well she waited too long so there's there is still a limitation on when miss johnson's estate can set up can can bring a claim but they just give her extra time because you know it's only fair i mean it may take a while to find a, a an heir that wants to be the administrator of the estate and um one of the other issues with statute of limitations is 
uh, one of the and this this happens every once in a while they bring it up as part of tort re- tort reform is that those who want to restrict the ability of plaintiffs to bring lawsuits so the nursing home industry the um, uh, medical industry the um, um, chamber of commerce chamber that's the the term I'm looking for chamber of commerce the auto industry you know all the people who are generally the defendants in these cases they're every once in a while they will propose and try to pass through through lobbying efforts a federal statute a uh, statute of limitations that applies to all cases even state cases so ironically the party that is constantly talking about states rights is often and always not just often but always the champion of of this type of tort reform um so if there were some sort of tort reform passed and it hasn't been passed yet they just keep getting threateningly closer and closer but if it were passed what it would mean is that the federal law dictates what the statute of limitation is in certain medical malpractice cases which includes nursing homes and it would be one year right so and and the reason why that is something that is supported by the the chamber of commerce and the in the healthcare industry is because like we said there's a balancing act with the the policy rationale behind the statute of limitations in the first place um clearly the um shorter that you make the statute of limitations the less likely it is that a plaintiff will bring the claim because necessarily um, people need a certain amount of time to investigate and file the suit. So the less time you give them, the more likely it is that you're going to lessen the number of lawsuits brought. And that's obviously the intention of the um, lobbying power of the healthcare industry, the nursing home industry. On the other end of that spectrum, like we said at the beginning, is the longer you give to somebody, the long, the more likely it is that they'll bring a claim. But the less likely it is that the defendant, the future defendant, will efficiently be able to defend that claim. Yeah, so it's so- a balancing act. However, as Will was saying, in our humble opinions, as we sit here and host this show, is that the statute of limitations, that the federal one that is proposed every other year by uh, a certain party, um, seeks to shorten the statute of limitations mm-hmm. on a federal level for every state not for the interest of the potential plaintiff it is in the interest of the potential defendant that is the nursing home itself yeah so i mean think about it the longer the statute of limitation it 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 more it is uh less and less fair to the defendant the shorter the statute of limitations and it's moving less and less fair to the plaintiff so if you've got a 50 year statute of limitation that is completely unfair to the defendant. Let the, let the record reflect that Will is extending his hand above his head as as much as he can. Yeah. So you've got a you've yeah. got a statute of limitation up here at fifty years out of the frame even. That is completely unfair to a defendant. Now where is the now do the sign it, for the shortest all the yeah. way down here? Yeah, let's yeah. say that you had a statute of limitation of one month for any claim. That is completely unfair to the plaintiff, right? So there's a good balance here, I think, with two years. And, and these tolling exceptions, I think that that's pretty decent, to be honest with you. Um, one year, it that's takes... Actually, that's actually an interesting point, because I don't know what the American Association of Justice or the Georgia Trial Lawyers Association mm-hmm. or the American Bar Association, the plaintiff law section, thinks about that. Like, what what is the consensus among plaintiff lawyers? I think it's going to depend on the type of case. It really is. Like, for, for me, a, a case where... Um, you're dealing with a, a an older person that passed away, and they they need to set up an estate, um, or even a younger person where you need to set up an estate. Maybe um, it's going to take a while for the family to to recoup from that. So I think a year is way too short. But two, I don't know. Now in some medical malpractice cases, where you may not really understand the exactly what happened in the beginning. I could see, you know, using the total of five years, um, but I think that they already have exceptions to that. So, right, yeah, the statute of repose. So, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, they, you know, to be fair to GTLA and AAJ, it is their responsibility to protect 
plaintiffs, and sometimes they have to go in all in extreme, so they may say five or six years, right? Just because they know that the Chamber of Commerce wants to be like six, six months. months, you know, like yeah. that's enough time. Yeah, and that's the thing is that, like I said, we're obviously seek counsel if you're if you're you know searching the internet right now trying to find out what the statute of limitations in Georgia. It, However, I'm just saying, yeah, that in some instances, which I don't think is 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 fair, is that if you're wanting to sue certain governmental entities in the state of Georgia, you've oh, got yeah. six months to put them on notice, or you lose it. So really, in almost an essence, it's a six month statute of limitations if you're suing the government to certain governments under the state of Georgia. And and the best and the best rule of thumb is if you think that you have a lawsuit treat it like the statute of limitation is tomorrow and until you sit down with an attorney and you hire them and you say please look at this for me you don't know so you you've got to make sure you've got to schedule a consultation with an attorney it's extremely important because like for example there are even uh, situations in auto accident cases where yeah you've got two years but if it's an uninsured motorist claim you may be contractually required to put them on notice your own insurance company with a certain amount of time or you forfeit bringing the case uh, you, or you at least forfeit that source of income or right. a source of award. And to further highlight that point in terms of letting somebody know and not sitting on your hands, I mean, we, we get calls all the time where the individual is just now um, coming to terms with the, the passing of their loved sure. one in a nursing home, and it's been two years. And by that time, um, we, you know, if, if we're able to hustle up and get the claim file before the statute runs, um, there are there are other factors that make the likelihood of success a little bit lower and that one of those is um, generally w when we're alerted by a client of potential negligence and we enter the case what we do is we send a notification to the nursing home alerting them that they need to hold on to certain files and documents um, to, such that if they destroy them after they've been put on this notice that we're, we're telling them that there's a potential claim it's potentially could be used against them um, at a potential trial so in other words the longer that you wait um, the more opportunity the nursing home has to destroy um, evidence that would hurt them without any type of repercussions so let's play that out to the conclusion you come in to the office of an attorney in the state of Georgia with a potential claim for nursing home abuse or neglect. The uh, the sign, they sign you up. They send the what's called a spoliation letter, the notice of the intent to file a claim. So moving forward, that nursing home now, depending on what the notification says that that the attorney provides them, um, if they destroy a videotape, if they destroy uh, a, a progress note or a nurse's note or a doctor's order. Um, any type of evidence, even if it would have helped them, um, if they did it after they received that notification of a claim, then in the state of Georgia, we're allowed to argue in court that it would have hurt them and that they destroyed it. There's a rebuttable presumption that they destroyed it because it was bad for them. Mm -hmm. And that's the power of the spoliation notice in these nursing home claims in the state of Georgia. So again, not just because you don't want to run out of time with your statute of limitations, but for other factors, including yeah. the spoliation um, notification, the power of that uh, to prevent them from destroying evidence, you yeah. need to act as soon as you can. That's a really good point that Rob just brought up because I have spoken to people on the phone who you know who were like look I, I looked at what the statute of limitation is on this and I still have you know three weeks and that's plenty of time it, it's not plenty of time it's not like all I've got to do is take this piece of paper and take it to the courthouse and go hey we made it within 21 days of the statute running there's a lot of there's a lot of investigation that has to go on there's a lot of evidence that could be missing there's a lot of paperwork we have to file um, so don't don't sit on your hands. Uh, I mean, it's even a legal doctrine, the the doctrine of I always want to say Nick Lachey, but it's the doctrine of latches. <laughs> I feel like you want to say Nick Lachey all the time, regardless. Yeah. Uh, he, he was he was Jessica Simpson. Yes, he was. Jessica when I say he was Jessica Simpson, I mean he was the one married. Yeah. Anyway, the doctrine of of latches, which you you know you can't sit on your hands and just wait around. Because I've spoken to some people on the phone before, and they've been like, "Hey, let me ask you a question." So uh, back in two thousand, my dad died. And I'm like, "Stop right there." I, I mean, I was twenty two years old in two thousand. I wasn't even an attorney yet. That was eighteen years ago. You don't have a case. 
Like, there's no reason for us to even discuss it. You waited 18 years? It would be, I, even as a plaintiff's attorney, I think it would be unfair for you to be able to bring a claim. Like, clearly this didn't matter to you if you waited 18 years to discuss it. Yeah. Um, also, and this is a good, this is important for nursing home cases. I have yet to come across this, but it is something to keep in mind, is that if your case is governed by arbitration, arbitration could have its own deadlines in there. Um, so at the the end of the day, what we're saying is this is a general description of, of how generally the statute of limitation works in these cases and in, in other cases, but you have to speak with an attorney, so and you need to do it immediately. In short, don't be the turtle. Be the hare. Be the hare, um, which I think is fitting on this um, week prior to Easter. Um, of course, we, it is the tortoise that wins the race. Is it? Are you joking, right? That's the Aesop. That's the whole moral of That's that right. fable is that slow and steady, slow wins, and steady the race. wins the race. So don't, Have you been so walking don't around be thinking that the hare beat the tortoise? I'm thinking of the cartoon with Bugs Bunny where he doesn't – doesn't Bugs Bunny win? No, he doesn't win. Wow. I can't remember. I do know that the slow and steady wins the race. I had a momentary blank because for some reason I'm like, well, the rabbit wins because clearly the rabbit's faster. I I was going to go with it just because I thought, well, uh, I guess from the get go, the rabbit's faster. But in the end, slow and steady does not win the race for the statute of limitations. Immediate. Be the hair. Immediate, immediate wins the race. Yes. That didn't work out good for me. That was not a good analogy. No. I apologize. Yeah, that's okay. It was. Okay, so be, you know. Be quick. Be the hair, but also be steady. Anyway, um, I think that actually, I think that we probably beat this topic to death. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. Do you have anything else to say about such limitations in Georgia? Let's see. Um, one of the reasons, I mean, one, in the last two minutes, and this is something we didn't talk about this particular, but there's another reason why. In Georgia, you want to be quick and give your attorney time. And again, like we'll get calls where the statute runs the following day. And there's mm-hmm. nothing that, you know, that sometimes we can, depending on the facts, we can act. But likely it's going to be very difficult for you to find an attorney when the statute runs in, in a week or a day yeah. or whatever it is. But one of the main reasons is, is that when you're bringing a medical malpractice claim, when a lot of these nursing home abuse claims are medical malpractice claims, is that in Georgia, you got to have an affidavit attesting to the negligence. So I, And it can take four months for me to get all the medical records to give to the expert who may take an additional two or three months it typically takes us about eight or nine months sometimes sometimes it can be shorter than that sometimes it can be longer even than longer that, but you're still dealing with the fact that like will was saying before if you got a week left that's not plenty of time now i will say this that there are some built-in rules regarding the um the statute of limitation on cases in which the attorney has gotten the case within 90 days of the statute running right and it extends their ability to supplement the um, the complaint with an affidavit. Um, but all that means is that that an attorney can do that. It doesn't mean that they're going to. Correct. For for us, the more the the harder you make it, the more risk we expose ourselves to, because you're making it very difficult for us to meet all these nuanced exceptions and uh, frankly it's m- usually just not worth it i like having a comfortable room of at least a year to work on a case and get it ready but don't don't hold us to that i mean like if it's it shorter depends on the case. It's, yeah, it depends on the case if it's shorter but again bottom line is be, don't wait around be the hair but be but be steady. Be the hair. Whatever what? the hair did that what what did the hair do that was so wrong? Did they did they did he like, Because he because he started off really fast and okay. was so far That's awesome. ahead. That's good. Okay. And then was so far ahead that he took a nap. And while he was napping, the tortoise had just gradually finished the race. And by the time he got to the finish line, it was too late for the rabbit to catch up. So he started off slow. But slowly and steadily finish the race. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Be the hare, but don't take a nap. But like, don't why would you nap. take a nap during a race? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure Aesop was just trying to think a little bit, you know, from a 50,000-point perspective. 
a 50,000 point perspective because that's a lot of points to make. I feel like he needs to narrow the points that he's trying to make. Okay. Here's a point that I would like to make at this point. Great segue. Which is the fact that we've come to the conclusion of this particular episode. Yep. Will, if someone out there wanted to listen, just listen, not watch, if they wanted to just listen, where could they where could they download this podcast? They can go to a lot of places that you find most podcasts, Stitcher, iTunes, Pocket Pod, which I think I may have made up or somebody told me was one. But most importantly, you can go to Spotify. That's right. Nursing Home Abuse Podcast is now on Spotify. So when you go to the gym to work out, you can put on our voices uh, to help you find your motivation. You. Or you can watch each and every episode that's it's hot off the presses every Monday morning mm -hmm. on our YouTube channel. Or on our website, which is nursinghomeabusepodcast.com. That is nursinghomeabusepodcast.com. And with that, we will see you next time. Oh, see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to the Nursing Home Abuse Podcast. Please be sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher. And feel free to leave us some feedback. And for more information about the topics discussed in this episode, check out the show website nursinghomeabusepodcast.com that's nursinghomeabusepodcast.com see you next